This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is there a way to import alphas into Shadowbox rather than starting from scratch? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have a simple poly mesh 3D star here loaded in. So I'm going to take this star and activate Shadowbox. So I'm going to go to the tool palette over here, open up the geometry tab, open up the Shadowbox area here. I'm going to change my resolution to say something around 512, change the polish to 1, and then just click Shadowbox. Now, once this is done processing, you're going to get something like this. You're going to get this star and this inverted box shape here. So if I clear my masking here, now I'm going to have a blank shadow box. Now, the functionality of Shadowbox is that you can use this object here, and if you just hold down Control to get your mask pen selected, you can simply just draw out on Shadowbox like so, and it's going to generate geometry from that masking. Now you have three sides on Shadowbox here, so if you draw on this back wall, you're just going to get something like this, but then you can rotate to the side and use masking in this area. This is going to change that position there. So this will allow you to create different sort of designs in Shadowbox here, just using simple masking. So the question is asking, how can I import alphas into Shadowbox rather than starting from scratch? So since Shadowbox is just using masking to generate its effect, you can use any of the masking options inside of ZBrush. So let's go over here, and I'm just going to hold Control again to get that mask pen selected. And I'm just going to click this, and I'm going to grab the mask rectangle brush. Now with this brush selected, I'm going to go to the rectangular stroke here, and I'm open that up, and I'm just going to set it to square, and then I'm also going to set it to center. So now when I hold Control and drag this out, I'm going to get a square mask like so. So I can use this masking brush now in here to create simple shapes. Now, along with just using this masking brush, I can also load any alpha and use that to mask from. So if I go to the alpha panel here and just click this, I'm going to grab an alpha that I already imported, so this Mad Max Koala design here. And now, holding control still with that mask rectangle, I can now draw this out. I'm going to hold spacebar to position it. I can just get it so it fills that entire shadow box area. And now when I release, I'm going to get this result. So I'm taking that alpha that I imported in, and I'm using that along with the mask rectangle brush here to mask out that area inside a shadow box. And then when you release, I'm going to get geometry like so. And now from here, you could switch back to, say, your mask pen brush, and you can come in and unmask different areas. And this is going to change your design here. So if I just unmask part of this here, Start adding different effects or add or remove geometry from the mesh. I need this to be thinner. I can go to the side. I can use my mask pen again, just holding control and drag out a box and get it to be thin like that. And now I have this as a little emblem with a little bit of thickness. Now, after you have this masked out, you just come over here and just deactivate Shadowbox. And now you're going to have a new subtool here that is just that Shadowbox mesh. Now, in addition to just taking your shadow box option here and loading alphas through here and using the mask rectangle brush to apply those alphas, you can also create custom texture maps that apply to the shadow box geometry. So if I go up here and open Lightbox and I navigate to the tool area here, you're going to see in this folder there is this sbref.psd. So I'm just going to select that and double click. And this is going to load this sbref over here to the texture palette. So I'm just going to close Lightbox. And now this texture here is a texture map that will correspond to a Shadowbox file. So if I come back to that PolyMesh 3D star and I activate Shadowbox again, just clear that mask. And if I go down to the texture map area and now load this texture, you're going to see that this texture correlates directly to the Shadowbox geometry. So you can see it has back, right, and bottom applied in this mapping format. So what you can do is you can take this texture and then modify it to make an initial starting block for your shadow boxes. So I'm just going to export this texture out quick. Go to the texture palette up here, and I'm just going to click export. And then I'm just going to save this out as shadow box. And this is just a PSD file here. And now with this saved, I'm going to open up Photoshop. And I'm just going to load in that texture. So here we have our shadow box reference image in a texture format. 
So now from here, I can make a custom shadow box file. I'm going to grab my layer panel here, pull that over. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just gonna make a new layer. So I'm coming here and just add this. And I wanna fill this with white. So I'm gonna come over here to my paintbrush, select white and just fill that pretty quick. And now I'm gonna take this background, just duplicate it. And then I'm gonna move it above my white layer here. And I'm just gonna change the opacity down a little. So something around 40-ish. And then I'm gonna select that original layer. So when you make a shadow box file, you wanna make sure that your background is white and anything you wanna generate geometry from is in black. So I'm just gonna come over here and go to the shape area here and get a custom shape tool. And I'm just gonna come in here and select, say, this dog paw, and select that guy. And I'm just gonna drag this out on this back panel here. And then I'm gonna fill it with black. And now I'm just going to move that into position, so something like that. And now I'm going to just turn off that background copy. So now I've created a shadow box texture map that is just using the back panel. So I can just save this out really quick. I'll save this out as shadow box paw. And now I'm gonna go back to ZBrush. So now that I'm back in ZBrush here, I'm just going to now import that texture in. So I'm gonna go to the texture map panel here, go to import, select that shadow box paw, load that in. And now I'm going to go to the texture map palette over here for that shadow box and select that paw. And so now it should look something like this. Now with this selected, I just need to generate a mask from this map. So over here, I'm gonna to go to the masking tab. I'm gonna to go to mask by color, and I'm just gonna do mask by intensity. And this is going to take that texture map and it's going to apply a mask from the intensity of it. Now I can go to the texture map tab and just turn that off and you should have something like this. Now the resolution of your shadow box is dependent on what you set initially in the shadow box tab over here. So the resolution on this one now is a little bit low. I should have increased the resolution some before I did this process. And after we have this area masked, we just need to click on our mesh. I'm just gonna hold down control and just click quickly. And that's going to take that mask and make it active. And now you can see that I'm getting that paw shape generated from that texture map we created in Photoshop. So this will allow you to bring in custom texture mapping and then just load it into Shadowbox and create a whole bunch of different designs. Now this process will also work with all three sides of the Shadowbox as well. So if I just increase my resolution here this time, change polish to one and go to Shadowbox again, and then I'm gonna clear the mask and I'll load in another texture this time. So I'm just gonna go to the texture map tab here, go to import, and this time I'm going to load in this Viper from Battlestar. And I have that loaded in. Now I'm gonna go down to the texture map tab again, open that up and select that Viper shadow box. I'm just gonna come in like so. And now I'm gonna go to that masking tab again, do mask by intensity. I turn my texture map off. And now I'm just going to click on the model here while holding control for a masking brush. And when you release, I'm going to get all three sides of that model generated from that shadow box. And now I'm gonna have a version of the Vic Viper like so. So I can go back to the geometry tab here, disable shadow box, and now I have a model to start sculpting on. So that is the processes you can use to bring in custom alphas for shadow box. So you can just bring in alphas in the alpha tab over here and then use any of the masking brushes to apply it to the shadow box. Or you can create your own custom shadow box texture maps and then load these in through the texture palette and then link them in the texture map tab here, mask by the intensity, and then that is gonna allow you to create custom shadow box maps that way as well. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing. Thank you.